Good evening, what everyone. It before. is uh, 531, yeah, and uh, although we have a uh, smaller agenda, we have an action-packed agenda. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Bozen? Here. Mr. Nichols? Here. Ms. Creighton-Smith? Here. Mr. Childs? Here. Mr. Greider? Here. Ms. Wilder? Here. And Mr. Foyce? Here. All right, thank you. Could you all join me in a moment of silence? All right, thank you. The pledge today will be led by at-large council member, uh, Rob Nichols. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I make... <coughs> A motion for approval of the agenda as amended with the removal of resolution item number six and resolution item number eight. And then the approval of minutes of the June 5th, 2023 council regular session and the June 8th, 2023 special session as proposed. Second. The motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we have an agenda. Uh, first part of our agenda is our uh, public comments. Uh, is there anyone that would like to address the city council on non-agenda related items? Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and let us know what's on your mind. Thank you. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, I notice on a resolution that, or on a consent agenda item, it's not related to that consent agenda item. It's related to the fact that I see this all the time. Um, there's a bid opening on July 6th and then a public hearing on July 17th. Um, I would request that you let us come to these work sessions when you have these conversations about these particular items that we get an opportunity to speak. We don't seem to get somebody coming to my door or calling me on the phone or sending me a, a letter to ask my opinion on any particular item that you guys discuss. I said it before, I'll say it again. I feel decisions are made behind closed doors and by the time since it's the 6th and then the public hearing is on the 17th, that we don't get a chance to do our input. Please consider that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening. Larry Stummy. Uh, I live at uh, 1008 Lois Lane in Waterloo. The Waterloo Cedar Falls community has no legitimate excuse for neglect of the deplorable and dangerous conditions, it is allowed and even caused for thousands of its black residents. If you don't believe me, read the most recent 24 seven Wall Street annual report released as of June 14th last week. Waterloo Cedar Falls is now ranked sixth in the nation as the worst cities for black Americans. This annual study is based on median income, unemployment, and housing. And two of the categories of this report, WCF received a lower ranking than it had in 2020. And that doesn't even speak to the scores of abandoned and dangerous residential structures that I have previously addressed uh, you about, and of which you are aware and the other abandoned buildings and dangerous factory owned by the city of Waterloo, which Dr. Blackwell has addressed and will address. We have not come to attack the past, but to prod solutions for the future. Solutions to these conditions demand involvement, participation and coordination of the total community, federal, state, county and city 
especially the Cedar Valley cities of Waterloo and Cedar Falls. The foundations uh, that we hear, the businesses that are here, the religious organizations, the service groups, and the individual philanthropists. Our combined goal should be by 2030, Waterloo Cedar Falls will be the best city in the nation for black Americans to live. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Michael Blackwell, 5125 Millennium Drive in Cedar Falls. On September 14, 2021, KWWL's Ron Steele reported that alumni and parishioners salvaged what they could from St. Mary's property, and the buildings were, be, were to be demolished in 2022. Needless to say, that did not happen and continues to be an eyesore in the neighborhood. The former campus is open to loitering and squatting and is an accident waiting to happen. Those in the community have no idea about any concrete plan to remove the dilapidated structures. They should not be left wondering while the property remains open for vagrancy and hazards, why the city's perennial monstrosity hasn't been leveled. Even more morally unconscionable is the unfinished work the, the EPA uh, admits remains to remove decades-long contaminants in the soil, groundwater, and air at the former Chamberlain. It is not that the people living in, the, in close proximity are not concerned about its unhealthiness. Certainly they are. Rather, many feel helpless because there is very little, if any, communication from the city regarding the environmental injustice, contrary to the community vision. Serious proactive steps have been paltry. Meanwhile, their quality of life perennially diminishes in multiple and cumulative ways. No palliative remarks in passing will appease the people living there. For years, the neighborhood has been infested and the urgency of the situation has been lost. Like at St. Mary's School, the community members around Chamberlain have no idea what to believe or hope for because of a lack of transparency and accountability in communicating with them and no visible mitigation efforts. In April 1963, Dr. King wrote the letter from Birmingham jail in response to arrogant clergy demanding he stop the demonstrations against Jim Crow. In 1964, uh, he published a book called Why We Can't Wait, in which he, indeed, he uh, included the letter and discussed what he called the urgency of now. Here, six decades later, we find a similar supercilious pathology in allowing these perilous environmental conditions to persist. We can assert with him that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We urge you to address and redress these perduring yet corrigible matters with, the, with due deliberation and to do so directly and physically with the people, which is your moral duty, your reasonable service, and your civic responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Aaron Stacy Roberts, 411 Almond Street. I had no idea that they were going to address, uh, come down with this intel today, but it's very much overdue as far as the wrongs that have been done to African Americans, black folks in Waterloo, Iowa, in particular, me and my children. And I have been here time and time before begging for help. First time I've been before this council, but for sure the mayor was here, and if I'm not mistaken, you, uh, the third gentleman over, and I gave you packages, that was probably five years ago. You weren't here. You certainly received one, and all the rest of the members. It's a shame that no one has called to ask me, how's my daughter, how's my son been doing? Are they still living under Stockholm Syndrome? Yes, they are. So what he's speaking about, it sounds like to me, is something that the city of Waterloo is failing to act on, which is the same as acting against black folks. And it really looks real bad for you all 
African Americans sitting on that council, if you don't address our screams and concerns, what you need to do is take it out of your hands because your hands are dirty if you're failing to act. Get a commission together to look into this because if the 24-7 Wall Street was, is re right, it's not even spoke on the disproportionate number and the infant mortality rate, which is the highest in the Western Hemisphere amongst black women. And I'm still not touching on my concerns. So we need to uh, get past, I think as a community, we need to get past looking for the city council or this mayor to assist us because what is being covered up is damages. If there's damages, there are dues and they'll do anything to cover it up, including rape little children like what happened with my daughter and send a message. This is my concern. Y'all need to You're act on- You're not talking about the city council. I'm talking about the whole daughter. city. Just, just I'm to clarify for those- I'm talking looking. about everybody who I'm talking to right now. You're talking about raping somebody's daughter. That's what that's, happened to my daughter. But that we didn't, the city council- I didn't say you did. did I'm just I'm making saying a you, distinction. What I'm gonna say is one thing, bro. What you need to do is address the issues that I'm bringing. That's what I'm saying. Because fell into act and you keep doing it, I'm gonna stay cool, calm, and collected because I know I'm winning. But the next person behind me, man, you're gonna ask somebody to act out inappropriately because you're fell into act for people. I'm not talking about me. Have a good day. All right, is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Just real quick. Um, the Waterloo Safe Neighborhoods Commission um, has been meeting. We are going to have our last uh, sort of public forum meeting um, at 6 p.m. on July 5th. Um, we will be changing the location to the library in meeting room A and B. Um, and I'll be sharing this information out um, and I'll be sharing it with the media as well. But I just wanted everyone to know that we, we are looking at having our last public forum before we get ready to write our report. That's due later this year, and again, that's July 5th at 6 p.m. at the library. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Um, just two things. One, I would like to congratulate our own Dr. Rob Nichols on his Distinguished Pharmacy Pharmacist Award that he got this past weekend. It's pretty amazing that we have such a high honor right here on our council. So just congratulations, Dr. Nichols, on that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and secondly, I'd just like to say congratulations, Waterloo, on a phenomenal My Waterloo Days. Thank you so much, Experience Waterloo, for all of the work you did to prepare such an amazing event. Over 10,000 people in the park uh, on Friday night. Uh, so just absolutely amazing that we were able to have such a phenomenal event and celebrate what makes us unique here in Waterloo. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes. Go ahead, ma'am. No, I was going to say an echo. Uh, um, Congressman, I'm um, Congressman, Councilperson, okay, maybe prophecy, <laughs> Councilperson Childs, <laughs> uh, comments about my Waterloo days. I was one of the 10,000 there uh, that night having a really good time. Um, I know we can't ask questions, but I would like to have information regarding the packet uh, that the young man, um, that the gentleman um, referenced. So for anyone who has that packet. I can okay. give you a little bit further detail. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. And definitely we know that we have a lot of concerns and a lot of issues. I don't know if Noel could talk about the process and the time that it takes for that kind of work to be done on those buildings and those communities um, that are being impacted by the blight and the you know, so, broken down buildings. So maybe at some point in time. Would you like to have a work session about it? Yes, please. All right. Yeah, we have data to, we have data. So okay. it'd be good to talk about it. And then uh, also to explain the process that it takes to um, take a house from someone or yes, take a building as definitely. well. definitely. I think it's important. Yeah, all right. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Just, just quickly, um, now that we've changed our, our noise variance policy, would it be possible for us to, when, when you approve them, for us to get a, a list of what's been approved? Uh, I've gotten complaints from people that, that are having loud music at certain places, and I, I can't tell them what, whether they it's, it's legal or not. You know, when they when they call me or, or send me an email. Um, yeah, we can have the 
um, Brittany sent out something. We have, have you got, I haven't gotten one complaint at all from the ones that actually are sanctioned or approved by the city, but uh, we can figure out some form of communication. Uh, I would have appreciate because I'm getting complaints on ones that I'm sure aren't sanctioned, but I can't really tell the neighborhood, the neighbors when they, when they email me, whether it's, whether they've applied for a variance or not. So yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, and what, we, what we're trying to do, uh, celebrating and connecting neighborhoods is one of our strategic goals. So we try to streamline the process a little bit so that we know it's taking place. So for those that don't know, it is vetted by the police department and all those internally. Um, but yeah, we'll try to figure out a way to uh, communicate that with you. But folks get complaints too. They can also call as well and we can look into it also. So thank you. Is there anyone else? Mr. Mayor, just really quickly. Uh, just echoing the my Waterloo days, amazing time. Uh, you know the safety and security that our PD put forth was uh, amazing. Uh, I know there were a couple of minor incidents, but nothing major. Um, the one thing I do ask is uh, more volunteers. Um, so hopefully next year when we have as many people down there, uh, we have a lot of people who will want to come and volunteer. So thank you. And with that, I make a motion to close the public comments. Second. A motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The public comments close. Mr. Mayor? Sir? I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, with the addition of bills payments uh, 1A1 in the, uh, for Monday, June 12th in the amount of $2,857,796.69. And then for Tuesday, June 20th, 2023, in the amount of three million one hundred thirty nine thousand eight hundred forty nine dollars and eighty five cents. Second. A motion has been made uh, with the second. Uh, Madam Clerk, a roll call vote. Uh, I'm sorry, electronic vote. Please cast your votes. All right, uh, that was approved. The consent agenda uh, unanimously. Uh, just really quickly, uh, Jennifer Bates, Alan Green, Jenna Dial, um, Lon K. Meyer. Um, well, the first two uh, were for the Cultural and Arts Commission. Uh, there are renewals, and uh, Jennifer Dial, Lon K. Meyer, uh, Richard Newland, Dusky Steele, Shannon Bass. Um, all are the first three or so are renewals for the Metropolitan Transit Authority, and then uh, a new appointment is Shannon uh, Bass for uh, that same uh, same um, uh, authority as well. Um, we also have the appointment of Robbie Decker uh, to Equipment Operator 2 in our street department. Is Robbie here? All right. Well, if Robbie's looking, congratulations for uh, joining our family. All right, could someone take number one, please? Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing. And that is for a request by Donnie Ray Investments, LLC, to locally designate 722 Water Street as a historical landmark. Second. A motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to comment to uh, Donnie Ray Investments uh, for designating 722 Water Street? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments and recommendation of approval of the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission and the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance to locally designate 722 Water Street as a historic landmark. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Going a second time. Uh, this is an electronic vote. Please cast your vote. All right, that was approved unanimously. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to <laughs> suspend the rules. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Please cast your votes. All right, that motion has been approved unanimously. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Once again, it's an electronic vote. All 
All right, thank you. That motion was approved 7-0 unanimously by the city council. Uh, can someone take number two, please? Mayor. Um, I, just, I heard two voices at once. We'll let the esteemed, <laughs> not that you're not esteemed, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll, when you win an award. <laughs> 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 oh, All right, don't agree. Wow. I mean, it's just a little election. Uh, I mean, that's kind of. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'd like to make a motion to receive file and uh, receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing for the fiscal year 2023 fiber to premises feeder and distribution and backbone network project contract number 1080. Second. That motion has been made uh, with the second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to comment uh, on this? Uh, fiber feeder distribution backbone network project. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. I see included on there is premises. Um, I've got two boxes in my front yard, one from Metronet and one from I don't know who, but wondering uh, what this two premises means. I went back in the computer and there's nothing further in the the council packet explaining this. So can I get an explanation? Uh, Mr. Youngblood, uh, could you explain what premises mean? Uh, Chris Youngblood, IT director. So the premise is the, um, the house or the business. Um, depending on how the bids are received, um, there will be uh, either boxes or above or beyond or below ground uh, for every, I think it's every two or four houses, again, depending on how the bids are received. So um, there will be there will be equipment out there that will most likely be seen. So. All, right. All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone that would like to comment on this historic? All right. Uh, Ms. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to close hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plan specifications, form of contract, etc., and authorizing to proceed. Second. This motion has been made with the second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you go this time I'll, first. I'll yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. I'll first. No, you go first. Go ahead. You're All right, age before beauty. Um, so <laughs> I just want to say, uh, <laughs> I just want to say, <laughs> let's get this done. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the bids. I'm very excited for this whole process. So um, let's get going. Thank you. Uh, I echo um, with, uh, with Councilman Ryder here that I'm really excited for this. I know that. Uh, prior to my election, I had the opportunity to speak with a former councilwoman, uh, Sharon Juin, and she was really adamant and excited about this particular project and the importance that it has for our entire city. So I'm just, I'm really stoked to get this done and looking forward to moving forward and getting some internet hooked up. All right. Anyone else? Well, I just want to say it's a historic, historic moment for the city of Waterloo. Um, if you take a look at what projects like these have done uh, around the entire country, it's been um, some pretty good things from Chattanooga to our neighboring community. But I think people need to also remember that, yep, the, the business plan, all those things are good, uh, but it's about access to and making sure no matter where you go to this throughout this community, uh, you will have the ability to be connected. And we're not going to cherry pick, we're going to go to every part of our community as well. So this is historic and monumental. Uh, so it's a good first step. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is an electronic okay. vote um, to ad adopt a resolution. So please cast your votes. It's the quickest vote we've ever had. Uh, all right. That passed unanimously with uh, all in favor. All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive file and instruct city clerk to read bids and refer to the consultant for review. Second. Motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk. 
All right. Our first bidder was Qtana Telecom Solutions of Loganville, Georgia. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount for a Division I base bid work of the FTTP was $25,078,825.63. Division I base bid total price, $25,078,825.63. Division II base bid work for the backbone, $17,778,688.69. Division II base bid total price, $17,778,688.69. Base bid total division one plus division two, forty two million eight hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred fourteen dollars thirty two cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate A, seventy five million seven hundred forty one thousand eight hundred six dollars forty cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate B, seventy two million seven hundred eighty three thousand five hundred twenty three dollars fifty cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate C. 81 million, eight, excuse me, 81 million, 676 thousand, 917 dollars, 39 cents. And then finally, base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate D was 78 million, 718 thousand, 634 dollars, 49 cents. Our second bidder was MP of Maple Lake, Minnesota. They provided 5% security. Their division one base bid work for the FTTP was $24,281,864.47. Division one base bid total price, $32,093,975.71. Division two base bid work for the backbone, $17,583,127.35. Division two base bid total price was $23,286,241.03. Base bid total division one plus division two, fifty five million three hundred eighty thousand two hundred sixteen dollars seventy four cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate A, ninety six million eight hundred sixty two thousand four hundred twenty three dollars thirty eight cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate B, ninety six million eight hundred sixty two thousand four hundred twenty three dollars thirty eight cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate C. $104,874,457.18. And finally, base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate D, $104,874,457.18. Our third bidder was Michael's Power of Nina, Wisconsin. They provided 5% security. Their division one base bid work for the FTTP was $29,851,646.71. Division one base bid total price twenty nine million eight hundred fifty one thousand six hundred forty six dollars seventy one cents. Division two base bid work for the backbone twenty six million two hundred seventy thousand one hundred sixty one dollars seven cents. Division two base bid total price was twenty six million two hundred seventy thousand one hundred sixty one dollars seven cents. Base bid total division one plus division two was fifty six million one hundred twenty one thousand eight hundred seven dollars seventy eight cents. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate A, $100,570,218.87. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate B, no bid provided. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate C, $106,871,767.66. Base bid uh, total division one plus division two plus alternate D, no bid provided. Our final bidder was ITG Communications LLC of Tullahoma, Tennessee. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount for base bid work on the FTTP was $15,100,874.07. Division one base bid total price was $21,244,963.93. Division two base bid work for the backbone was $13,281,835.68. Division two base bid total price was $16,448,982.14. Base bid total division one plus division two, $37,693,946.07. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate A was $66,565,919.83. Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate B, $66,565,919.83. 
Base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate C, $77,864,565.10. And then finally, base bid total division one plus division two plus alternate D was $77,864,565.10. All right, thank you. All right, uh, it's resolution time. Could someone take one through three? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to adopt the following resolutions. Number one is a resolution approving an office and miscellaneous storage lease agreement with the United States Department of Transportation doing business as the Federal Aviation Administration at the Waterloo Regional Airport with a lease term of on or about August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2028 and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. Resolution number two is approving a professional services agreement with Aviation Security Consulting, Inc. of Castle Pines, Colorado, in the amount of $68,006, in conjunction with the rewriting of the airport security program and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. And three is a resolution approving a professional services agreement with Main Street Waterloo in the amount of $60,000 for fiscal year 2024 and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Is there anyone with questions about uh, these items? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. My question is on number one. Are we renting some, something to them that we own or are, they rent, are we renting something from them they own? Mr. Kasperi. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Keith Casper, Airport Director. Uh, no, this is a, a brand new lease starting from uh, scratch. And, and so in contrast with the previous SLA or short-term lease agreements that the FAA has come uh, in front uh, with us in the past, this is a complete new five-year agreement. And the reason why it took so long for it to come before Council is because uh, to my understanding is that interim managers uh, with the FA do not have any authority to make decisions as far as office or lease agreements. So we've had for uh, some months now a full-time manager with the FA System Support Center division. And so he and I have been working together along with their real estate office in Fort Worth to determine what um, I'll say square footage office needs, storage space related, et cetera that he needs to run his, his business, his shop. And so uh, this will be, a, uh, to my understanding, a significant increase annually and then over the course of the five-year term uh, of revenue to the airport in the city. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, are there any other questions, council? All right, uh, through items one through three in our resolutions, um, please, uh, please cast your vote. All right, that was approved unanimously. All right, let's go. Um, let's go four, five, and seven. Mr. Mayor, sir, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution approving a memorandum of understanding with Intercog for the writing, preparation, and submittal of the I Iowa DOT's Rise Grants Program for the extensions of Fisher and Hearst Drives in the amount not to exceed two thousand dollars, and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Uh, Next is a resolution approving a development agreement with Freedom Truck and Trailer Wash LLC and Deer Creek Development for the construction of a 4,600 square foot automated truck and trailer wash with a minimum assessed value of $2,200,000 located at the southeast corner of Greyhound Drive and Cyclone Drive, including minimum assessment and development agreements with a rebate of 85 85% for years one through two, 80% for years three through seven, 75% for years 8 through 10, and 50% for years 11 through 12, and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute, execute said documents. And seven is a resolution approving an amendment to the professional services agreement with H.R. Green originally approved on February 27th, 2023, for an additional $8,900 for a total, of, total contract price of $36,550 to complete additional testing at Gates Park and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. Second. The motion has been made with a second. Is there anyone uh, with questions on those three items? Council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. If Mr. Anderson could explain how we got to this, the, these percentages on this development agreement. No, could you give some, <laughs> some background on, 
number five, please. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Um, as you may recall, the entire Greenbelt Center area um, has been developed by uh, Harold Youngblood, um, not the city's funding for the infrastructure. So we do have agreements in place to reimburse him for the infrastructure. Then we also try to treat the uh, projects that happen out there as if they were the same as being on city land. So the reimbursement amounts um, for the 85%, 80%, 75% 70, is all basically based on the amount of uh, land that they're buying for the project. We've reviewed that through the site plan review. We base that on the amount of the value of the new project and what the rebates it will generate to give them back the amount of the land that they're buying. Um, that's based on a $4 per square foot, which is probably below market rate. Again, since we're doing the uh, infrastructure reimbursement, it's a lower amount. So my question is, is, is the, le the, the development agreement does not say they're buying it. It says they're leasing it for an, in excess of 15 years on page one of the development agreement. Have we in the past ever created this type of incentive for leased land? Um, I don't think we have. I'd have to go back and look to see if we've had any other. We've had buildings on leased land. Um, I'd have to go back and see if they were set up exactly the same, but we, I think we would have based them on the same price. So is, there's nothing in this development agreement that says after this lease is up, if, if they decide to do something different that they couldn't come back on the sale of the land and ask for, if it was, if it was let's, let's say it, they ended up tearing it down, now we have an empty lot, or Harold has an empty lot. Would he qualify for more incentives? If he was building a brand new project there and creating new tax base, and obviously we'd have to look at, if they were demo, demolishing it, we'd look at the existing tax base that was there and for the amount above that. Okay, because that, be, that's my concern, is that, that we, would, we would be paying for the same land twice, especially when we're, we're paying for them to lease it. It also says in the development agreement that either the company, which would be the, 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 car wash, the truck wash, or the owner, which would be Deer Creek Development, it doesn't specify who's paying the property taxes. It says they either, either or can pay the property taxes. So how, how do we determine year after year who gets the rebates? So, so all three parties with the city are in the development agreement. Um, we'll definitely have to get a, a determination on who's paying the property taxes and who gets the rebates. Um, we usually do that through an assignment of rebate sheet. Okay, because it, 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 it's, yeah, it's a disturbing amount. It's, it's just shy of $600,000 in, in tax rebates over 12 years. So, and then the, the, when the stuff you, you sent me, I, I really appreciate all the information. Uh, and, and it looked really good over, but you, you, you drug, it, drug out all the information and all the, all the finances for 20 years, which really makes this look, look good. But the rebates stop at 12. And when I, when I dropped that, when I, when I did the math on, on all of these taxes paid for the rebates amount to the debt service at the, at the 12 year mark, it was, you know, less than a third of, of what you have, have here. And I'm just concerned that we're, that we're financing leased, putting buildings on leased property and giving tax rebates to leases. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for now? All right. Um, any other questions on any of the other the other two items? All right. Uh, electronic vote, please. No, I'm five. Okay. All right. So um, we have a uh, four, four and seven approved unanimously. Uh, number five. Oops. I meant I just number. Number five, number, five, well. number okay. five with Mr. Bozen and Mrs. Creighton Smith voting no. So items, items passed. Since uh, we are not doing eight, could someone take nine, 10, and 11, please? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to adopt the following resolutions. Uh, number nine, uh, approving a golf course pro shop agreement with ML Golf Inc. and authorizing mayor and city clerk to execute said document or said agreement. Number 10, a resolution approving a temporary construction easement agreement in the amount of $548.32 with Marta M. Salentic related to the Titus Lift Station in Force, Maine, located at 1658 Burton Avenue and authorizing mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. And number 11, a resolution approving a permanent easement agreement for $826.78 with Broadway Limited LC 
related to the Titus Lift Station force in Force Main located at 1750 Broadway Street and authorizing mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Is there anyone with questions on 9, 10, and 11? Mr. Hudding has questions. Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. Just wanted you to be aware that both golf pros are with us tonight. Uh, Monty Meyer and Nate Lubbs are here. Um, and this does come to you with a recommendation from the Leisure Services Commission. So if you have any questions for them or for me. And if you need golf right. lessons, you signed up. Not me. Pay. That would be them. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, just a real quick question. Um, I know in the past uh, it's been a, a, a challenge, but it seems like after you kind of re, reorganized a little bit, uh, we seem to be doing a lot better than we were the previous five. I think, I think things are, are going very well. And uh, this is a little longer term contract. And without getting into all the details of it, these pros are prepared to, to uh, purchase an entire new fleet of golf cars, which will be great for our golfers, and do some improvements with some software and so forth. But overall, things are going very well. So Car, we're, cars with GPS? You'll have to ask the detailed Se questions seriously. of those gentlemen. <laughs> electric, electric carts, gas. Okay. All right. We got to talk about that. Yes. All right, all right. Um, any other questions, Council? I just want to, Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. on the record, it would be nice if they were electric. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I would like to say that, and um, that, that the management of these three courses under this under this group has improved dramatically. The, their ability to schedule tournaments and keep other courses open and bring people into Waterloo, they've just out, they've done an outstanding job. And this contract is really benefits the city. They're they're they've really stepped up, and I, I couldn't thank them more for the, for the work that they've done. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, thank you. All right, um, uh, electronic vote. All right, that was approved unanimously. Uh, could someone take number one, please? Ordinances. Mr. Mayor, Sir. I'd like to make a, make a motion to adopt a resolution finding that an area is appropriate for revitalization, determining that the development or redevelopment of said area is necessary in the interest of public health, safety, or welfare for the city limits urban revitalization area plan. Second. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Uh, questions about this item? Yeah. If you got a question, please come up, sir. Forest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. I have a problem with the expanded Clara, and uh, I had the privilege of reading a communication sent to all of you on the council. And uh, in this, it talks about the amount of housing starts. They went up and down, and uh, they're down a little. But right now, you're talking about subsidizing multiple housing i don't know that there's a bad need in for multiple housing but what you are doing is creating competition for existing multiple housing people out there as well as people who have rental houses here in waterloo and uh, i can tell you that it's it's not a bed of roses out here for me and people like me uh, and there's a statement in here and if you folks read it it talks about the 2020 census count. Things are down here in Blackhawk, Blackhawk County. Everybody else went up, but we went down here in Waterloo. That tells me what we've been doing has not been working as we had hoped. So that tells me that what we are doing is adding more of the same. We are going to subsidize more. We're going to give more and run more competition. Yes, we need people, but but we need the finances too. You know, you can't just keep increasing our taxes. 20% of my rentals are empty right now. And uh, that's not a good feeling. 
and uh, I rent below market value because I want to keep my renters. Uh, I think we've got to do something smarter than what we've been doing. And I, I don't think we can continue to give everything away. Most of these developers that will come in and do these things are from out of state. And you folks are the first ones to say you do not like out absentee landlords, but they're the ones you're financing. I was in a business place today. They were celebrating 90 years of being in Waterloo. He said, if someone wants to come in and build competition and run against me, the city's got all kinds of money for them. But I've been here 90 years, our family has. Do you think anybody has stopped in to congratulate me? He said, not as of today. I think we need to take care of the people we have here before we start spreading our money elsewhere. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. I have to echo what uh, Forrest has said. The thing that disturbs me about the modus operandi of the city of Waterloo is we seem to keep giving a lot of money to a lot of people. Now we're going to include these multifamily dwellings in this plura. And we don't, we give money to industries or, or big business people, but we don't get one share. Uh, yeah, okay, we're supposed to get it back into property taxes. When? Because we can't continue to sustain giving money to people and not seeing any recovery for 20, 25 years. I won't be here. Thank you. Right, thank you. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Greider. Uh, so I'm very excited to, to vote for this. I want to thank uh, the Planning and, and Development Office um, this will also include uh, the child care incentives that, that we had talked about that, that I brought forward um, a while ago. So I'm, I'm very glad that we are focusing not just on short term, but looking at what Waterloo looks like down the road and, and how we take care of our children. And it's also a, a plan that's adaptive and understanding that the housing needs of the past are not going to necessarily be the housing needs of the future. So I think that this is uh, an adaptive forward focused plan and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to voting for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bozen. Thank you. Well, you knew I was going to have something to say. No, you started to say oh, something I, earlier. I guess I did. I, I can see up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got that 180. Uh, I have been a, a strong opponent to including multifamily dwellings in the Clara. It's, I, I, it's, I don't make any bones about it. I discussed it at planning and zoning on a number of occasions. And uh, it's difficult for me to, to pass multifamily dwellings when, when they also a lot of times qualify for infill development. If we take the 412 plexes that are going in southeast of Kimball and Ridgeway, they're going to get $240,000 worth of infill development money for us at $60,000 at 12 plex. And now we're also going to give them three years at 100% tax abatement. And that, that bothers me because we don't have the money going in. I voted in a positive manner with this last time for simply because the one thing that I that I that I really pushed for to get on into the Clara was that sliding scale uh, tax abatements instead of the three years at 100%. I don't want to hold this up. I will I will support this based on on our ability to to actually get some tax revenue coming in right away and and help the homeowners so they don't have sticker shock after three years. All of a sudden they've got an eight nine thousand dollar tax bill that, that's coming due as opposed to if you do the 10 year sliding scale, you know, with the 80, 80 and, and goes down each, each year, at least we have some revenue coming in. I just wanted to voice my, my disapproval of the, of the uh, uh, multifamily dwelling included in the tax abatements, but I do support what planning and zoning and, and, the, and, the, and Noel's department did to include the sliding scale so that we can actually start getting some tax revenue up front. Thank you. Yeah, and, and with the view, um, I went to the um, housing conference, forgot what month it was, and if I'm not mistaken, overall in the state of Iowa, I believe there's, what, 40,000 plus, please don't quote me on that, but I heard a number uh, similar to that. Uh, and then when we take a look uh, around our community and taking a look at uh, some of the dilapidated properties that 
uh, we've had, I think, since uh, 2004, we've had to acquire over 170 different properties, and there's more in the works to try to pursue. Um, so, yeah, we need quality housing. We need good, clean places for people to live. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we see housing in every part uh, of our community as well. And if you're, if we think about it, unfortunately, we're in a competition right now to have good, clean housing for people. So um, our strategic goal, uh, which was given to us by the community for our 2030 vision plan focused on elevating housing. And so I think this is a really critical point uh, in our city's history uh, for us to be able to compete, for us to be able to attract uh, and hopefully one day we won't, we may not need uh, to have these incentives, but right now uh, we need all hands on deck to try to uh, have good, clean living opportunities here within the city. Um, Mr. This, yes, ma'am. No, you're fine. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to add that um, when we hear reference to the 24 7 report, one of the issues is the, the issue of wealth accumulation. Mm -hmm. Um, and that the wealth gap is tremendous. And for those individuals who haven't had an opportunity to have a home and they're renting, they cannot, uh, they cannot accrue any wealth. Mm -hmm. So this provides an opportunity for other individuals in the community who are oftentimes disproportionately uh, impacted and have disparate outcomes because of the opportunities not being available to them. This provides them with an opportunity to own a home mm -hmm. uh, and to have some equity and acquire some wealth. Yeah, so which, I appreciate that. Which goes to number eight within our strategic plan of community <laughs> opportunity at uh, eliminating barriers for childcare for people as well. So, all right, um, electronic vote, please. All right, thank you. First part passes. All right, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance adopting the city limits ur urban re revitalization area clara plan. Second. The motion has been made uh, with the second. Council, vote, please. Yes. All right. Thank you. I pass. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> sir, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion has been made with second. Council. All right. That passed unanimously as well to suspend the rules. All right. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt the ordinance. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, council, please cast your electronic vote. Cast. All right, thank you. That passed unanimously. All right, can someone take number two, please? Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, move to receive, file, and consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance establishing grades for the City of Waterloo fiscal year 2023 sidewalk repair assessment program. Zone two, contract number 1064. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Um, is there anyone with uh, questions on this particular item? Council? Mr. Mayor. Sir? Um, I would like a list of all qualified or uh, properly insured and bonded uh, contractors that can perform this work. So that way I can put it into my newsletter so citizens can have access to it. Or sidewalk repair. Because the, the challenge is, what if we miss someone? What if you miss someone? You, oh, you I don't see. They'll say that we're improperly, Jamie missed them on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do you have a list of some that, uh, you know? Yeah. Jamie Coutson, city engineer, uh, Mr. Childs, we have a list of probably several hundred um, contractors that are bonded to do work within the city right of way. Give them all to them. They, yeah. can be, they can be plumbers. They can be, we don't necessarily know. They could be concrete contractors. We don't necessarily know what it is that they do. They just have put in for a bond and councils approve those bonds. Um, we can try to come up with a list for you, but it's going to be very lengthy and they're only good for a year. So a question, is there a link or is there an, something that 
people if, can access online. If folks, generally speaking, what we tell folks, if they have questions about a contractor to call us, call our office directly, and we can tell them whether or not they are bonded um, with the city. Okay. Um, the insurance requirements and all of those other things, some of that, we don't know what they carry for insurance, but they do have to provide us bond for all of that. So we can tell them that they are bonded, but that's about it. So if we can tell them, then I would, I've been asked several times, uh, the people don't, that have asked is that they have no issue with if they, getting the service done. Just yeah, they if know. they have questions, if they're getting a quote and they have questions, they get two or three quotes from, a, from contractors, have them call our department. We can let them know if those folks are bonded to do work in city right of way. That's not a problem. We're happy to do that. Okay, great. All right. Well, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to be a resource so folks know where to. Yes. So I think maybe, so I think maybe partnership and who can actually do the work or who's bonded to do the work would. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and permits are required. Mm -hmm. So that to get a permit, you'd have to, you'd have to be bonded. Yes. I think some citizens yeah. want to get the quotes taken care of and don't want to have to just order of operations. You know, if they can get the quotes with people that actually are bonded in the first place, instead of coming and finding out, oh, you're not bonded now to get more quotes. Right. All right, um, anyone else? All right, this is uh, electronic vote. All right, that passed unanimously. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion been made with the second. Uh, please cast your vote. Passed. All right, that passed unanimously. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to receive, file, and consider and pass for the second and third times an adopted ordinance. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Um, please cast your votes. Passed. All right, that passed unanimously. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to be made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.